obviously I'm running out of home locations as it gets darker earlier because we're in a different part of my office that you didn't see last time, but here we are. Hey y'all, what's up? It's Coach Mara. I just woke up from a nap and I am ready to go. Got my water here and I am ready to tell you the basics of how to play volleyball. So the rules. It's just so weird that I didn't make this video first because maybe those of you that have subscribed to my channel are new and you don't know. First things first, I'm gonna explain to you the rules of like a typical game. So each team has roughly 12 players, give or take a few extra. So you can only have six players on the court at one time for both teams. So both teams have six players on the court at a time. If you want to know the position names and what position you should choose, I will link my position video up here because that will give you a lot more detail. But there's six positions. I'm going to breeze over all of that. So essentially, you're playing a game of six on six. The net is your divider and you will be operating out of the volleyball court outlines, which just means the outline of the court. So things that you should know, you play to 25. If you get to 25 and you're like 25, 25, you have to win by two. So then if it's like you get 26 and then they get 26 and then you get 27, then they get 27, you still have to win by two. You have to beat them by two in order to win. You need to only touch the ball three times. I know I'm doing a lot of numbers here, but you can only touch the ball three times. So what we call is three touches. The only exception to this, the only exception to this, is if you block a ball, so that just means you're up at the net and you make your hands nice and big and you touch the ball up over the net, that doesn't count as a hit, which means if I went up and I blocked it and it touched my hand, I could jump, when I come back down from my jump, I could still hit it if it came close to me because it doesn't count as one hit. It, doesn't count as a hit, it just counts as a block. So think of them separately. A hit would be a pass, uh, a set or a spike, or like a an arm if you can't get a limb there fast enough. That would be a hit, and you only have three of those to get it over the net. You have some pretty serious outlines um, of where the court is, like I said earlier. So those outlines are the length of the court, going long ways, are longer than the width. Yes, length, I'm trying to remember high school math. <laughs> the length is longer than the width. So it feels kind of like a, a long cylinder or a long rectangle. There are a few things that you have to think about when you're talking about outlines. So if the ball falls outside of those lines and your team doesn't touch it, don't don't go and get it that is free points free stuff we like free stuff i like free stuff i don't want to work hard for something if i don't have to leave the ball that is your point if the ball goes out from the opposite team's touch so say i'm on the opposite team of you i hit the ball but it goes out so out of bounds that means you on your team win the point i i do not win the point because i hit it out and then I have to go back to my team and be like, sorry guys, my bad. But it's okay, because everyone makes mistakes. So that's really important to know. Um, but if your team touches the ball and it goes out, you can still get it. There's nothing prohibiting you from staying in that little rectangle. I saw this a lot when I was coaching grade nines or middle schoolers. They, they thought that they physically themselves couldn't exit the court to get a ball. So if their teammate touched it, they couldn't go and get it. That's not true. That's a myth. You can go and get it. If your teammates, say for instance, blocks the ball, it touches their hand, that they still need to get that ball back over the net. And if it goes out, you're, you're still, you have all the right in the world to go run and go grab it. Not grab it, but like play it. So hit it either pass, set. Normally you don't spike if it's going out, but hey, if you're super accurate, go for it. 
I've seen <laughs> a few crazy things. Um, so, especially when I was playing, <laughs> funny, somebody hit it and it went out of bounds, but instead of going out of bounds, like on our side, like directly to the sides or behind us, it went out of bounds as in across the net and out of the outline on the other side. So the other side's um, horizontal outlines. And one of my teammates, I don't know how, but they ran. This is, this is totally legal, by the way. You can do this. She, <laughs> within like two seconds, saw the ball where it was going, ran under, around the net, and saw where the ball was going to land on the opposite side, and hit it back to us over the net to where we could play it back in bounds. It was like, the ball comes over, someone hits it, it goes out, but instead of going out on our side, it goes out on the, like, cross the net and out on the other side. My teammate runs around everybody, <laughs> busts her ass, gets there, sends it back over the net, back to us, and we continue playing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. That was like the best, the best game ever. I remember that game, it was so fun. So when it comes to outlines, that's something that you can do. And, oh my gosh, sorry. Whew. That's something you can do and totally legal. Another thing with outlines is if the ball is going out, you will normally hear people say that it was on the line or it wasn't on the line. In volleyball, if a ball lands on the outline, so directly on the line or like a little bit on it, it will count as being in, which means the point goes to the team that sent the ball over. So say I hit a ball and it was like a beautiful sh cross shot. That doesn't make sense. I hit it over the net and it looks like it's going out. Like it looks like it's going out of bounds so you decide on your team, like, nope, I'm leaving it. It's going out of bounds. Free points for us. Woohoo. But then the ref says, no, it's actually my point because it was on the line. And you might say, no, it was out, but it doesn't have to be all on the line. It just has to be an, like a little bit. So even if it's just a little bit on the line, it still counts. So that would be counted as being in. It's kind of annoying. But the more you play, the more in tune you are with um, what is considered out or what is going to be out or not. Worst case scenario, if you don't know, just go for it. Just go for it. No coach is going to be mad at you if you are not sure and you decide to go for it. Those three hits that I was talking about earlier, you normally, normally, coaches want to be looking for a pass, so a forearm pass or a bump, a set, and then a spike. Those are normally the three that we're looking for. That being said, I'm not saying you should do this and I'm not saying it's a good idea, but if it's like dire situation, like we, we need just to get there quickly, any body part can be playable, <laughs> which means if you play soccer, you're going to love this because I coached a few soccer players this year and that's all they wanted to do. So what I mean by that is if you play soccer, you have very good foot control, which means anytime a ball comes to your feet, you want to kick it, which isn't great in volleyball. That's not what we want. But if it's in like a really dire situation and you just need to get the ball up, you can like kick it and hit your foot or you can headbutt it or your elbow or your stomach or hit in the face. I remember one time I got hit in the face like hard, like people were concerned, but I was fine. I got hit in the face so hard that it ricocheted off my face, <laughs> kind of at the perfect angle because I was, I was in my athletic stance, like nice and low, like I was supposed to, and it hit my face at like the perfect angle and it bounced right to my setter. And they, we still played it and we won the point. Afterwards, my coaches were like, Ma, are you okay? And I'm like, I'm good. So that was kind of funny. But anything goes. Coaches may look at you like, mm, why'd you do that? Because it's not the proper technique and we want you guys to use proper technique. But you know, if it, you, 
if you gotta do it, you gotta do it. Another thing about the outlines is when you go and serve, you are normally told you have eight seconds, which people freak out. When you say like you have eight seconds to serve, people really like lose their mind because they think, oh my God, I don't have any time. No, when we say eight seconds, it's like one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. Like you have some time. Don't go crazy and just like chill on the back line forever after the ref blows the whistle. No, that's not a good idea. But take your time. Don't rush. You have some time, not a lot. But when you're serving and you're about to serve to, to like get, get it over the net, you have to be really careful about where your feet are. Because remember, like I said, when the ball is even like the slightest bit on the line, that counts as in. Same thing here. If your foot touches that back line, even a little bit, the ref's going to blow the whistle if he sees it or the lines people if they see it. And he'll say foot fault. That just means you stepped on the line, which is like an unfair advantage. That's how they put it. An unfair advantage, which just means like you were closer to the net than the other team. So they give the point to the other team. So what you want to do is just practice in with your coach in practices. Be like, hey, I am not touching that back line whatsoever. I want to get it over the net at least like a good few inches from that back line. So then you never get called on a footfall because, oh my God, it's the stupidest feeling ever because your serve might have been beautiful. It might have been exactly where it needed to be, where no one on the other side was. It would have been awesome. And then you get called on a stupid foot fault and you kick yourself and you're like, damn it, Mara, why did you do that? That was gonna be so good. Yeah, it sucks. But just practice a couple inches off, off of the back line and then you'll be okay. There's a lot of little rules in volleyball that some refs really like hammer down and then other ones just don't really mind. Um, it all depends on the environment you're in. So if you're in a more competitive environment and there's a lot of stakes, the refs are going to be a little more particular about their, what they're seeing and be very nitpicky. Versus a more recreational environment, maybe you're just starting out, like middle school, they're not going to call some of the stuff that they're seeing. But one thing a ref will always call is if you hit a ball twice in a row. That's a volleyball no-no because that's what we call a double touch they'll go like this. If you need more reference for referee hand signals, go check out my referee hand signals video up here. So double touch essentially is you're hitting the ball twice in a row. You can hit the ball twice as long as someone else hits it in between yours. I don't know if that made sense. So let's say I pass the ball and then you set the ball. I can now hit the ball. I, I can do that. I can't, however, pass the ball and then also set the ball or hit it again or um, do it twice or have it hit my face and then hit my arm. Like I can't hit it twice in a row. That's the only volleyball no-no. Wherever you go, every ref will call it because it's just the rules. It's not allowed. I don't know if anybody knew this, but I didn't know this until a few months ago. I had to do some research and um because i'm a nerd like that i was researching and i was like i don't know where volleyball actually started it started in like 1865 or something in massachusetts holyoke massachusetts in a ymca gym in the us of a and i was like huh that's pretty interesting again back then they had different rules and the rules over time have changed a lot and i'm pretty sure they'll constantly be changing but it's kind of interesting 1865. That's a long time ago, folks. This game has been around for a while. This ain't, this, this ain't new shit. Same shit, different day, as I like to say. Another big volleyball no-no that sometimes refs will call, maybe not all the time, it has to be kind of obvious, is if you touch the net. Absolutely not. Do not touch the net. The way I teach and coach my teams is pretend that net is a laser like a wall of lasers, okay, going the, all the way down. You cannot cross that line. You will get hit by a laser. No bueno for anyone. If you touch the net, the refs can see it. Because why? They're at the top of the net 
and they're right in the middle, so they can see if it moves, and they can see who did it normally if they're paying attention. Don't touch the net. Pretend it's a laser. Stay off of that thing like it's the plague. I can't, I can't stress it enough how great some plays may have been, but someone touches the net, and if you touch the net, the point goes to the other team. Again, free points. Free points just given away. Given away. And sometimes it's like, it's an accident and you can't help it. Okay, fine. But if you can help it, stay off of that thing. You want your body and your momentum to be on your side of the net. You don't want to cross that midline where the net is or where the line is underneath the net because that will A, cause probably an injury, which we want to avoid as much as possible. And we also want to keep our points. We don't want to give any points away because we did something silly. That's my view, at least. So, like I said earlier, there are games to 25. The games are called sets. So each set is to 25. If you win a set, so you're on one team, I'm on another team. If you win one set and then I win another set, that means we're now one to one, which never is good because now who wins? So we need to go to a third set. This third set will be shrunken down and condensed to only go to 15, just to make sure everybody's getting out on time and going home for dinner. That third set will be to 15. When you switch sides, this is pre-COVID times. This is pre-COVID times. They may change the rules after this, I have no idea. But pre-COVID times, in a set of 15, you switch sides after each set. So after the first set, you switch sides. And then halfway through the third set, you switch sides. So in your little game to 15, you switch after eight, because 15 isn't a very even number. So as soon as someone hits eight, they call, like, everybody go to the back, and then you switch sides. And they'll normally do something like this. Again, go see my referee hand signals video where I explain it. But then it's a game to 15 and not 25. Just makes it a little bit shorter, makes the intensity a little bit, bit, a little bit more prevalent, and it's just more interesting than if you did a whole nother game to 25. I know in some cultures, um, they have a specific model that's called, I don't know what it's called, but they do three games, so three full games, but instead of 25, they go to 21, which I find interesting, but it just gets really tiring after three games, and especially if the game is like really intense, you get tired very quickly. So it's just a lot. So I find it better to have that third set to be a little bit shorter, so then you can conserve some of your energy and use that intensity to your advantage. Yes. Okay, I think that's everything. Why do I always end a video like this? I think that's everything. As of right now, that's all of the rules that I can think of. Yeah, that's all the rules I can think of. If you have any suggestions, any rules from where you live or where you have played, leave them in the comments below. Also, leave me your video ideas. I had someone reach out recently and at, just give me their video idea, which gave me the idea for this one. So please send them my way. I am always looking for new ideas. I am always looking for the next thing that I'm inspired to film. And maybe that could be your idea. Leave anything you comes to your mind down below. Leave me comments, like this video, subscribe if you haven't already. 94% of you, we're getting better, 94% of you that watch my videos are still not subscribed. Come on, kids. We just hit 100 subscribers. This is so exciting. So subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in my next video. Good job, team. Thank God I don't like, I'm not prone to like bloody noses or anything because it hit me like dead on. Um, yeah, I don't know what else I can think of here. This is a great use of filming time, Mara. You're doing great. It's literally just me, like, staring into space, being like, is there anything else I'm missing? No, I don't think so. Um... Oh! Yeah! 
outro. Nailed it.